Hello everyone, welcome back to Hotline Topics. This is your back to Sido Phillips, which one called Mama Rimbo. Shot Nigerians with this revelation. An interview with Daily Trust, the veteran actress disclosed that she was broke during the early stages of her career. Especially as her husband Femi died a few years after their marriage, leaving her to raise their children. Even a while ago, she cried that she was tagged the cheapest actress in the movie industry. She recalled how one of her children, who initially did not align with her religious beliefs, advised her that she should become a witch so that she can become rich. And in her words, it was tough. After prayers, some of them would always cry. Whenever one of my sons saw me with a Bible, he would ask what I was doing with it. At a point, he said it would take me to where I could become a witch and I agreed. He said that once I became a witch, we will be okay. I agreed and he took me somewhere. But before God and man, when I got there and they told me the requirements, I was shocked. They said it was the child I loved the most that would be used for sacrifice. I told the person that it was the child I loved the most that brought me to the place. At that point, my son held my hand and said it was time to go home. Mama Rimbo has had quite a journey. She's 80 years old this year, and she revealed that it was not until she was 50 years old before she could buy herself her first new clothes. But then she said at a point, someone asked her, Mama, what illness are you nursing that doctors monitor you and you have to buy drugs? And she replied that she had none. That alone deserves glory to God. She's not using the testimony to taunt people who have some ailments that they are battling with. And she said, let me also say that before I attained fame, I really suffered. If suffering shows on people's body, it ought to overly show on mine. But God did not make that my portion. If medical practitioners had grades for high blood pressure, high blood pressure patients ought to be in grade 1 category. There were days I was at home for about 3 days and did not even leave my room to ease myself. All I was doing was crying. My only pillar of support at the time was my mother, who helped me to look after my children. She helped me to accommodate them and I went to find a means to provide for my family. I was happy on my birthday, October 16th, but I also remember the sufferings I had experienced in the past and things I lost. The times I had to trek long distances in Lagos just to put food on my table due to my husband's death. I also remember some of my colleagues in this profession who are dead. I also remember some people who attended schools with me, but they are no longer alive. Their fathers were billionaires. But when they fell ill, the ailments defied medication or money. But if I have headache, all I do is to take painkiller and water that I've prayed upon or just rub anointing oil on my head. I'm really grateful to God that God is on my side. Well, today, Mama Rainbow is one of the highest grossing actors and she also has much watching endorsement deals. In fact, she has been an ambassador for a telecommunication giant, Etel Nigeria, for quite some time now. A little bit about her background. Her father was a renowned goldsmith in their vicinity and she was his only daughter. She was well loved and very joyous whenever she was in her father's shop at Oibo Market in Lagos. And wherever she went, people used to tag her as the goldsmith's daughter and they used to give her things then. There was a time that someone came to collect their gold from her father's shop. I removed one of them and put it in her ears because she was the only girl with about 15 or 17 brothers. Her father loved taking her to the shop for everyone to see so that they would know that he had a girl child. Mama Rimbo was overjoyous. She was an overjoyous child. And she noted that her father's transition into becoming a prophet affected their family. It even affected his work because her father was the president of Goldsmith in the Uyibo, Lagos State. Due to his status, whether he worked or not, he made money. They used to live at Ebutemeta No. 24 at Jeba Street. Her father was a free giver. But when he became a prophet, not like this day's prophet, so he could not afford a motorcycle, not to talk about a car, until he died. She said there was no money. All her father did then was to go to the mountain and pray for the church. It affected the household. But then her mother stood firm in faith as well and trained them. She was asked if her father's calling was why she was also called. Well, she said God calls everyone in different ways. 
God had called her about 15 years ago, she said. But she did not answer his call. According to her, she went to London at a point. And someone was in a trance. And she did not want to get into the church so that they wouldn't see a vision about her. But the person came out and asked the whereabouts of the staff of power God bestowed on her. She went to America and another person advised her to heed God's calling so that she would not suffer his words. When she got back to Nigeria, it seemed as if she was blacklisted in the movie industry. She went to meet her colleague in Kakoju and he told her that there must be something wrong. She explained to him and he said he should look into the prophecy given to her. Another person told her that God said she must not rent out the holy house she built. Instead, he should ring bells of praise and people in the house should be prayerful. She stayed in a place where people charge tenants up to half a million naira per annum, but she does not have a single tenant. She accepted the message. And that was how our church started. And on how our children adjusted, she revealed that it was tough. After prayers, some of them would cry. Whenever our son Femi saw her with the Bible, he would ask her what she was doing with it. At a point, he said that he would take her to where she could become a witch, and she agreed, as we had earlier stated. He said that once she became a witch, they would be okay. She agreed, and he took her somewhere, but before God and man, she said, when he got there, they told her the requirements, and she was shocked. He said it was the child she loved the most, or be used for sacrifice. He told the person that it was the child she loved the most that brought her to the place. At that point, her son held her hand and said it was time for them to go home. And on her celebrating her 80th birthday this year, 2022, Mama will have this to say. I clocked 80, so it has to be celebrated in a big way. I will celebrate it all through the year in different countries. God has been gracious and merciful to me. I'm either lucky or God is merciful to me to get to this age. It is not until I clocked 50 years old that I started buying new clothes for myself. In my area, where we had actual B for 2000 naira, I will not go to that area for about two months because I could not afford it. There was a time they shared pieces of land at 2000 naira with complimentary drinks, but I could not afford it. If I did pay such, my children would not have clothes to wear. Neither would they have food to eat. They would not be okay. My priority was my children. I always loved my children. And I wanted mine to be as comfortable as they could. And also well educated. It was when I turned 50 years old. That I could boast of buying a brand new Akara. At 1500 naira or 2000 naira. But now I gift people my clothes. Well our interview was quite interesting. And we have come to the end of this episode. With Mama Rainbow. Shows Nigerians with this revelation. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe and Hit the bell icon for our daily content.